Harry's Wife, Part 93.32, Thunder Stealer. As you know, that we, the narcissists, cannot stand that the focus is elsewhere. Many narcissists don't actually realise that's what's happening, and because it amounts to a threat to control, that the fuel that we should be receiving is going to someone else. Often it will manifest by the narcissism causing the narcissist to have their fury ignited, to cause the narcissist to feel contemptuous, envious, exhibiting hatred, Dependent upon the subschool of narcissists, this could be by making a wry remark to somebody about somebody receiving a promotion. For instance, a bitchy comment about she only got there because she slept with the managing director. Or isn't it amazing that he got that promotion given that his father owns the company? In other instances, the individual might cause a scene by knocking something over, perhaps even catcalling somebody driven by the narcissism causing them to behave in that way, to shift the focus onto them. You will have seen it with narcissists that turn up at funerals, wailing, crying, almost throwing themselves onto the coffin. Oh, Uncle Edward, how I've missed you. And everybody thinking, you've not even seen Uncle Edward in the last four years. What's all, of this? What's all this about? And people are mystified as to this outpouring of apparent grief. Well, when you realise that that individual is a narcissist, you know that it can't be Uncle Edward's funeral because that means all attention is on Uncle Edward. The attention has to be on that narcissist. And, although they believe that they are absolutely overcome with grief because their narcissism makes them believe that's what's actually going on, they are, of course, behaving in that manner, driven by their narcissism to bring all eyes onto them, thus asserting control over the congregation at the funeral and receiving their fuel. Therefore, when other people are the centre of attention, when other people are receiving fuel from other individuals, whether it's your partner being spoken to somebody at the bar, whether it's your friend being praised by somebody for how they look, if you're the narcissist, then the narcissist invariably feels an unconscious threat to control where an unaware narcissist and a conscious threat to control where an aware narcissist. Eyes being on somebody else, somebody else being complimented, somebody else being spoken about, makes the narcissist feel vulnerable, feel weak, feel unimportant. And the narcissism immediately enters the fray to protect that narcissist by compelling the narcissist by a feeling and thought to do something in order to bring attention onto themselves and thus assert control over the assembled people who are there on the radar. And of course, Harry's wife is no different. And you'll have seen in parts past him, there have been instances where she has sought to steal the thunder of various individuals. But she's at it again. And this time, it's in respect of her nemesis, the Duchess of Cambridge. First up, Mail Online tells us about the Duchess of Cambridge's recent trip. Here she goes. Giggling Kate Middleton whizzes down the slide instead of taking the stairs at the Lego Foundation Play Lab in 59.99 Zara Blazer, as she admits working with babies makes her broody and makes William worry she wants another one. The Duchess of Cambridge, 40, arrived in Copenhagen for a whirlwind two-day solo visit wearing Danish colours. Kate looked polished in a £59.99 Zara Blazer, smart black wide-leg trousers and Aspinall of London handbag. She will promote the work of the Royal Foundation Centre for Early Childhood, a project close to her heart. Joked, she was broody, and William worries about her work with babies as she'll come home wanting another. Added that her children George 8, Charlotte 6 and Louis 3 were very jealous. They weren't coming to see the Lego Foundation. And it explains that ordinarily she's the picture of regal refinement, but the Duchess of Cambridge showcased her playful side on a visit to the Lego Foundation Play Lab in Copenhagen. And a giggling Kate is shown emerging from the shoot, and she lands gracefully by all accounts, and up she pops. And there's plenty of photographs, which you can see in the mail online, I don't need to reproduce them here, showing her normal engaging self, where she's, by, she's an excellent listener, exhibiting her empathic traits as she interacts and engages with people. And, of course, we know the Daily Mail, no friend to Harry's wife, makes it very clear that she's not wearing an expensive blazer in order, of course, to jab the expensive tastes of Harry's wife, 
even though that she often doesn't look particularly good in some of the things that she wears. And there is a multiplicity of pictures of Kate as the Daily Mail goes into Kate overload, showing her getting out of the car, talking to various people, looking engaged and demonstrating her empathic traits, sat around the table with various people, the director for the Centre for Early Intervention and Family Studies as she visits the Children's Museum. And no doubt all the Danes speak excellent English, as do most people in Scandinavia. So there we are, Kate on a solo trip. We don't need to go into all of the details of what's described there. But basically, she's doing her thing. She's engaging with people, exhibiting her empathic traits, and it's being published. So, of course, as the nemesis engages in this behaviour, what's going on across the Atlantic? Well, the international news tells us. Harry's wife steals the limelight from Kate Middleton's Denmark visit. Kate Middleton on Tuesday embarked a two-day visit to Denmark, her first foreign visit since the pandemic began. As Kate's pictures and videos from her first engagement in Copenhagen emerged, Fashion Museum Bath said the dress Harry's wife wore during her Oprah Winfrey interview has been chosen as Dress of the Year 2021, and it would go on a display. So, as a consequence of that, it just happens to be the case that there's the timing for this dress, which I've obviously mentioned in part 93.30. Mention is made of that to bring attention back onto Harry's wife, and it exhibits the desperation by which this is done. We see the Duchess of Cambridge. She's going on a trip. She's engaging with people. It gets some publicity, as it would undoubtedly do so. Rather than just let matters lie, the PR machine has to go into overdrive. And we then get the barrel scraping behaviour of the gullshit dress being exhibited and the announcement about what Fashion Museum Bath has to say about it. But it doesn't end there. As picked up by the international news, they point out, as if it was not enough to steal a limelight from Kate's visit, Harry's wife's pictures from her husband Prince Harry and Princess Eugenie from their dinner together also surfaced online. Some royal fans think it can be a coincidence, but others think the Duchess of Sussex might have intentionally done this. Now, of course, coincidence is what will be pleaded by anybody that supports the Duchess of Sussex's case. Plausible deniability. Oh, I didn't do this on purpose, it just so happened. Of course, Harry's wife wouldn't even answer to the accusations, staying in a lofty, haughty position of withdrawal. Other people who understand the narcissistic dynamic know that it's no coincidence that this announcement was pushed forward about a dress going in a museum. It's hardly news, but it, as we know, it was splashed there front and centre, as I explained in part 93.30, and undoubtedly will have been picked up in other news articles also. And we get all of the pictures from the dinner date that took place on Saturday night. A double whammy in an attempt to draw attention back onto Harry's wife and take it away from her nemesis. The usual response of the narcissist to attention being elsewhere, and because the Duchess of Cambridge holds that status of nemesis, Harry's wife's PR machine has to, has to, nullify that threat to control by the releases talking about the dress and the dinner for four as an attempt to nullify, nullify that threat to control and assert control over the readership. A clear example of the response of the narcissist to that threat to control, beautifully demonstrated, and of course, whoever wrote the article, oh, it's Webdesk, that uh, unusually named individual at the International News, has picked up on the fact that it isn't a coincidence, and it's all done about stealing the limelight. Of course, they don't understand that... This is done because of the narcissism driving her behaviours to respond in that way. And this isn't a one-off. To turn around, you might give her the benefit of the doubt and just say, it's coincidental that they've come out at this time. But she has form in this regard. There's been repeated instances whereby when any, anybody else in the royal family does anything of note, and particularly her nemesis, her PR machine has to spring into action to make her look impressive to bring attention back onto her. She will, of course, never see it that way because her narcissism won't allow her to. She, and she will just hide behind if she were to answer the allegations of it being plausible deniability. No, it's just a coincidence. But you, educated by my excellent work, no different. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>